Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We praise you, God. We magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go into our scripture reading. I think we're right. We're on. Hallelujah. Are we hearing online? Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're good? Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. We welcome you today to Tabernacle of Praise Church International. We thank the Lord for his goodness, for his greatness, his majesty, and his power. Are you telling me to go ahead? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to read our scripture this morning from the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. There are, there are a couple of technical difficulties that happened this morning. I can't tell you about one of them, but, but the Lord knows. So that must be a reason that the devil is fighting this worship experience this morning. So we're, we're just excited about what the Lord is going to do. In our midst today, we're excited about the word that's going to go forth. Hallelujah. We're excited about the worship that will be rendered unto him. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17 for our scripture reading this morning, beginning at verse number 1. And Elijah, Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives... Before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Chirith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Chirith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread, bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. As he drank and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a raven there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a, a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. So, hallelujah. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterwards, Make some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up. 
nor did the joy of, jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Hallelujah. Minister Smalls is going to come now and lead us in praise and worship.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I love you, Lord, more than anything. I love you, Lord, more than anything. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're worthy of our praise more than anything else, Lord. We love you. Thank you, Lord God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, yes. Before we uh, go into the word this morning, I just want to uh, remind us, we posted, uh, just for the sake of announcements at this point, I won't do this at the end, on our TOP members page, we have begun our Smiles for Kids project for Dominican Republic, and we need you to, to begin purchasing your items so that here, we can begin boxing in two weeks, all right? So please go there or go to the uh, KCMI website, and you'll see the list of items that we need. You can purchase online and have them shipped directly to the church, or you can, uh, you can send them to your house, and you can box up your own box. But if you buy in bulk, you should be able to buy enough. And when I say bulk, I'm talking about if you buy socks, you get 10 socks to a pack, and you can split that up or bring them here to the church. Uh, starting next week, we want to get started on that so that by the end of this month, we'll be ready to ship to Dominican Republic. And we invite those of you who are watching online to join with us uh, as we try to be a blessing <clears throat> to the children uh, in Pescateria, Dominican Republic, where our church is located. So please, ma'am, and please, sir, join in this effort. I would like to see 100% of Tabernacle of Praise joining in this effort so that we make sure that we can at least serve 100 children. Hopefully, with everybody else helping us, we'll be able to serve more than 100. So we want to, we want to encourage you in that. All right? And look at the other announcements on, on TOP members on our website, and let's, let's uh, govern ourselves accordingly. All right, so in the book of... 1 Kings chapter 1. If it's too cool in here, we can turn the heat on. Is it too cool? Y'all good? All right. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, good. Y'all know to bring a coat and everything because we're trying to stay safe. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. 1 Kings. Oh, I'm not there myself. 1 Kings chapter 17, and I'm going to read again verses 8, beginning of verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little drink in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar, jar of oil dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. I want to use for a thought this morning when the Lord sees you in your drought. When the Lord sees you in your drought. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void. It accomplishes all that you desire, and you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Thank you for sending your word to us today. Thank you for what your word will accomplish in our lives. It's in the precious name of Jesus. Grant a fresh anointing of your spirit now. That I may minister under your anointing. That we may hear and receive under your anointing. So that yokes will be destroyed. And burdens removed. And we will be encouraged in our drought. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. When the Lord sees you. In your drought, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I've heard a lot of sermons based on this passage, and, and all of them mostly that I've heard have been centered on the blessings that comes from taking care of the man of God. Amen. And rightfully so, this woman in the text was blessed by obeying the voice of, the, of God through the prophet. Amen. However, when I, when I turned to this passage of Scripture and read it, the first thing that jumped out at me, the first thought that came into my mind was when the Lord sees you in your drought. Yeah, yeah. The focus that the Lord dropped in my spirit was the woman and her situation, not the prophet. Amen. Now, I understand correctly that this is, this is dealing specifically with God dealing with the people of Israel and how God took care of the prophet as he prophesied uh, to the nation of Israel. He prophesied, he, God used him to prophesy that a drought was going to come. And why was the drought going to come? The drought was coming because of the wickedness of the people and how they had turned away from God. When you read chapter 16 and maybe chapter 15 and earlier, there, there is a succession of kings who are wicked, who do wicked in the eyes of God and who lead the people astray. You know, as I think about this and think about how God uses nature as a means of, of punishment uh, upon people, upon his people who will not obey him, I can never get away from seeing all of the catastrophes that are going on in the United States in particular and around the world. And I hear the Lord say, I am God, I do not change. If God used nature uh, in the early days, the days when the scriptures were written, God will use nature today. 
Amen? Amen. As, an, as a means to either get our attention or means to discipline us or punish us for our sins. And we cannot, the church should never move away from trying to make, uh, the church should never move away from proclaiming the word of the Lord and move into trying to make people feel good and justified in their sins. There's no way that we can do that and be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin. Amen? Amen. He will convict us of our sin, and, 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 and which if we don't repent, there are consequences for our sins. Amen? It may not happen immediately so we can see it, uh, and, and, but, but it happens. Amen? And as we look around us, we can see God's judgment upon this world that we're living in because so many people have rejected Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Jesus is really, he is the stone of stumbling. He is the rock of offense. People are offended uh, at the name Jesus. Talk about Buddha, talk about hard Christian, even mission the name God, and people are not offended, but mention Jesus. Bring Jesus into the picture, and people immediately become offended. Amen. And so we have to, we got to go back to the, to the word of the Lord. So anyway, you know, as we look at this text, I thank the Lord for the provision that he made for the man of God. But it is important for believers uh, who are going through droughts in their lives, dry places in their lives. And many times for us today, you know, uh, you will never see a person's dry place. This is something that you experience individually. And many times, because we only see each other when we come to church on Sunday and we've already taken a shower and put on cologne, cologne and perfume and dressed up in our Sunday best, you know, we don't see each other in our dry places. Amen. It's, it's, isn't that, that those moments alone? It's in, at home. A husband may see his wife. A wife may see uh, her husband. We may see each other. We may see our children, but we don't tend to see the body of Christ as we go through droughts in our lives and go through dry places in our lives. But it's important for us to hear and it's important for us to know that God is not only concerned about his servant, the man or the woman of God, God is concerned about you as an individual as you go through droughts in your life, as we see in this particular text. God is concerned about this widow. Amen? Now, now, she's a widow, and she has a son, all right? And, and, and that's bad enough, but then there's a drought in the land, so she doesn't have a husband to go out and, 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 and hunt for food. She doesn't have a husband to go out and, and, and hunt for wood, amen, uh, so that he can prepare for, for his family. She has to do this herself. She has to do this herself, you know. Just let that, just settle on that for a little bit. Young people, think about that. You know, think about that for a little bit. You know, I, I, and I don't, I don't want to harp on this, but you got to understand that, that, God, that God ordained marriage, and marriage is honorable. Amen? Amen? And there's a purpose in marriage. Two are better than one. Can somebody say that? Amen. Two are better than one. Amen? Amen. And, he, and I'm not talking about a mama and a baby. As much as you may love that pretty baby that comes, two are better than one. And God intended for you to marry that man and that married man to marry you and to live in a house together and take care of that, raise that child together. So that 2 o'clock in the morning, when your body is tired, you got somebody else who can get up and take care of that baby. Amen. When the baby is sick, amen, and you got to miss work, you got somebody else who can go to work. I mean, God's plan never is never, uh, God's plan is always the best plan. I just wanted us to, to settle in on that because today, it's for a lot of people, this doesn't matter. And God's ways don't matter, you know, and we're not thinking, we're not realizing that the poverty situation that many of us are in will never change until our behavior change, Amen. Hallelujah. Our behaviors and our culture has to change. You know, we can't continue in the processes that we're in and feel justified in it, you know? And, and so, so anyway, anyway, that, that's just a little point that the Lord said, settle on, think about. You know, you got to think about some things. Think before you act. Amen? Think before you do stuff. Amen? Two are better than one. So this woman didn't have a husband. She had a husband now, but her husband had died. And so she had to, she had to do this for herself. And then there was a drought 
in the land. So she, she's in a bad situation. And it's, the drought has been going on for so long, for so long, that, 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 that the, at this point, all she has is a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil, and she's out gathering a few sticks so that she can make the last cake of bread. And then I thought about this thing. And then, 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 then she said, we were going to just lay down and die. We can't imagine that. But I'm telling you what I experienced. If I fast for a long period of time, sometimes the best thing for me to do to make it through that fast is go to sleep. Lay down and go to sleep. Because you can't continue to function. You can't get, your body is tired. You, you, you know, your spirit man is being revived and being strengthened. But you get to a place, you don't want to defile the fast and go and get a piece of bread. You just lay down and go to sleep. Amen. Amen. So, this lady realized that in the situation they were in, to keep from suffering any longer, the only thing she could do, they could do, was eat this last morsel. Now, it didn't, he says cake, but you know, he says, bring me, bring it in, in your hand. Some translation says cake. So, she didn't have a big uh, nine-inch frying pan full of cornbread. She just had a little morsel of bread. He said, bring me a morsel of bread first. She said, we were going to make the last, the last cake of bread, and we were going to eat it and lay down and die, which meant tomorrow there was no bread. Later on the night, there was no bread. This was the last piece of bread that she could make, and they were going to lay down and die. My goodness. That means she couldn't scratch up a, 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 a potato chip out of the corner of the, of the pantry, you know? She couldn't find in the back of the refrigerator, you know, some, some, some cream cheese. Or she couldn't find any crackers. All she had left was this little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. They were going to lay down and die. Yeah, yeah. The word of the Lord to you today. If you're in a drought, if you're in a dry place that has been sustained over a period of time, is that God sees you in your drought. And if God sees you in your drought, God will do something about it. Amen. He will do something about it. Now, I mentioned the overall context of this, of this, uh, this, 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 this text this, and the, the context of this text. Is, is God calling his people back into covenant relationship with him? Amen. Uh, what some commentators call uh, separatist Yahwist. Separatist Yahwism, which means, which means that they are to worship God and God alone. Amen. They are not to have any other gods before them. Now, what had been happening was, you know, the, the people wanted to worship God, but they wanted the Baals too. And this is, this, this is why these kings had, had agreed to them or had allowed them to establish uh, Baal worship in the nation. God had plainly said, I, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Do you realize that God is the same today? He doesn't change. He's not pleased when we say we're worshiping him and then we worship ourselves or we worship our jobs or we worship our cars or we worship our families or, or, or we worship our careers or anything else. God is not pleased. This is separatist Yahwism. Amen? We worship the one and only true God. But how many people have established idol worships, idol worship in their lives, idols in their lives, in, in their families where God does not come first. God is not first. It's God and. You know, as I say that, I remember the transfiguration of Jesus, amen, and, and on the mountain, Jesus is transfigured, and they see, they see Elijah and, 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 and one of the other prophets come, and, and then at, at the end of that vision, as God was showing them who Jesus really is, at the end of that vision, everybody's gone except Jesus, and, and the scripture points out that they saw Jesus only, Jesus alone. 
Amen. We don't worship the Lord Jesus Christ and something else. Amen. And an indication that you're worshiping something else is that God is not first in your life. The word of God is not first in your life. You're not concerned about what the Bible says. You're concerned about what you want. Amen. You do what you want to do regardless of what the Bible says. It means that God is not first in your life. Amen. Amen. So in this drought that lasted a number, this drought lasted a number of years, as I said. And during this time, uh, as God used Elijah to proclaim his word, God took care of Elijah. God provided for Elijah. We see him going by the book, brook of Cherith, and God sends a raven. Let me tell you something. God will, use, God will use any means that he needs to use to take care of you. Amen? He will do it. Amen? And when you're faithful to the Lord, God will send somebody by to bless you. God will cause debt to cancel. Now, some of us want debt canceled, and we're being faithful to the Lord. Amen? We don't even pay our tithes and offerings. Then we want God to cancel debt. Amen? You need to pay your tithes first, and then ask the Lord to cancel your debt. Amen? Somebody shout amen. 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 But God will use any means necessary to take care of his children. So he sends a raven to bring food, to bring meat, and to bring bread in the morning and in the evening. And notice Elijah doesn't complain. Amen. Some of us complain about the food we eat. You need to get in a drought. You need to be in a, you need to be in a land where there's no food to eat. Amen. You need to be in a place where all you get is what's on the table. Amen. That's what you need to be. So you learn to be thankful for the meat in the morning and the bread in the evening. My grandmother used to say, God only provides, only promise bread and water. I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> but she, she was teaching us to be thankful for the bread and the water that we had to, the bread we had to eat and the water that we had to drink. Amen. We got to learn to be grateful and be thankful. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I hate to look in the refrigerator and throw away food. So when food is left, I'll be packing it up and put it in the freezer. And I'm not one to hate eating leftovers. Sometimes the food was better on the second and third day. Give me a leftover any day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, thank God for fresh food to cook and fresh food to eat, but leftovers are okay with me. Amen. Thank God for his provision because there is a place where people are physically in drought where like this widow woman, they are gathering sticks wherever they can gather it from. Amen. And they're looking for a piece of bread. They find a grasshopper. They're grateful to get it and eat it. Amen. I was in Liberia one time and it rained and then all of these bugs started f popping up out of the ground and the people that made a fire and they were grabbing the bugs and throwing them into the fire, roasting them so that they could eat them. Not saying that that was only food that they had, but they were thankful to eat the bugs. Amen. Somebody said there's a lot of protein in some bugs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, again, what the Lord was showing me from this text that I won't go off and lose my train of thought and direction here and stay in the text. What the Lord was showing me in this text is that He's not only concerned about those of us who are pastors. Thank, thank God for him blessing us. Thank God for you all who sow into, into our lives and, you know, bless us through pastors, partners, and other ways. Sometimes the Lord just lays on people's heart to send a blessing. Thank God for that. You know, uh, God is not just concerned about me. He's not concerned about the, the prophets and the evangelists and the apostles. God is concerned about you in your situation. Amen? It's important for us to understand that. He is concerned about the common man. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I had an opportunity late last night, late last night to minister to, to, to one of my cousins, a distant cousin. He just posted something online, and I think I was like the first person who saw it because I just happened to open up Facebook at that time. And, and I was able to I share the word, but then I realized I need to go to the, his private page and, and to messenger and just send him a message. And late last night, I was trying to help him see that God saw his situation and God knew his situation and God was able and ready to minister to him. Now, he said some things and I just said, okay, but then I posted a scripture because the word of the Lord, amen, will minister. Amen. The word of the Lord is active. The word of the Lord is alive. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Glory to God. And 
we need to learn to share the word of the Lord. My opinion does not matter, but the word of God will minister in a situation. And it will, God, his word is so alive that once you think you forgot about it, his word will pop back up in your spirit, in your mind, amen, even if you're not saved, because what? God is concerned about your salvation. God wants to draw that person to him, amen. So we got to share the word of the Lord, amen, regardless of whether a person is saved or not. When we talk to them, when we give them advice, give them the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 God is concerned about the common man. God is concerned about the person that's going through, even if that person doesn't know him. Because God may be using or can use that situation to draw that person to him. Amen. And it's being drawn to the Lord that's what's most important. Because when this body is dead and decayed, your soul and your spirit will live on. Where will they live? Where will your soul and your spirit live? Will you live eternally with God in heaven? Or will your soul and spirit live in hell? And remember, just going to hell is just not, a, a, just not eating a piece of cake. Remember, Davies died. And he went to hell. And he was in hell and he saw Davies in Abraham's bosom. And he said, let him bring me, just dip his finger in water, bring it and put it on my tongue. Cool my scorching tongue. The Lord said, there's a gulf fixed. You can't cross over. So the reality of it is, it, it, the reality is, is that your consciousness your soul, your mind, your feelings, your emotions, your affections, all of them will be alive in hell. Davi said, well, I got some brothers back at home. Let him go and tell them don't come to this place. The Lord said, if they didn't believe the prophets who are there with them proclaiming the word of the Lord to them in essence, they won't believe anybody that came back from the dead. And that's the way people are. Some people just don't believe. They don't believe. Somebody can come back from the dead. You can have a vision of your grandmama, and she telling you, you need to get saved. I might not be talking about y'all. I'm talking about people watching on Facebook. Y'all already say. <laughs> Some of the people watching on Facebook. The Lord will give you a vision of somebody who, has a, who you dream. They come back from the dead and speak to you and tell you, you need to go to the house of the Lord. You need to give your life to Jesus. Oh, that was just a dream. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live my life. And that's what people do. They don't believe. Yeah. But anyway, so as I looked at this situation, as I looked at this text, there are some things that the Lord showed me to share with us this morning concerning when he sees us in our drought. Because God sees you. He sees you in your dry places. He sees you when there's drought in your life. That, that drought could be trouble. That drought could be affliction. That drought could be a, a disease that has attacked your body and does not relent, does not let up. That drought could be problems in your marriage, problems in your home, problems with your children, and it just keeps on going. It keeps on going. It keeps on going. That drought could be anything that does not relent and that does not let up and that, 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 that works to kind of if it, if it could, pull you away from God. Amen. So the first thing the Lord showed me in this text was, uh, your assessment of the situation is not God's assessment of the situation. Your assessment of the situation is not God's assessment of the situation. From a natural perspective, things can look really bleak to us. I mean, that lady saw drought. That lady was experiencing drought. It had gotten so bad that for her, the only thing she could, she could conclude was the best thing to do was to make this last little cake of bread. Me and my son will eat it. We will lay down and die after this. Let's go to bed. Now, I don't know what the bed was like, but I can imagine being in, in some African nations, for people that are really poor, the bed is just a little mat on the floor. And what they call a, a lapa, 
that they cover up with. Just lay down on the floor, cover up with that lapper, and pray that you don't wake up. Bam! Hallelujah. God wants to shake you up this morning and let you know that your assessment of your situation is not God's assessment of your situation. Amen. We might be looking at drought. We may be looking at devastation. We may see parched earth and brown vegetation. We may see evidence of death everywhere we turn. Problems, troubles, difficulties are all we see. And experiences of, of those things are very real to us in the natural. But we must remember that seeing things on the level we live on are not always the way they are as God looks from his level. As God sees it from his perspective. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 says, For now we see through a glass darkly. We see dimly. We're looking through. We're only seeing a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then shall I know fully, even as I am fully known. We don't see it all. We're looking. All you got to do is just ride in an airplane. You see what I'm talking about. When you're riding along in your car, go stand outside. You're going to see some bushes back here, some trailers back there, some trees over here, some apartments over there. Get on an airplane and fly over York, South Carolina. You see things totally different. Perspective makes all of the difference in the world. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yes, perspective makes the difference. God's perspective is most of the time, unless we get the revelation of God, God's perspective is totally different from our perspective. And then in life, God may allow drought. God may allow trouble. God may allow difficulty. He allowed it in Job's life, didn't he? Yeah, he allowed Job to go through. The devil couldn't have touched Job and, and, and caused that affliction if God not, had not allowed it. Amen? He allowed it in Jeremiah's life. Jeremiah the prophet was afflicted by his own countrymen only because he pro proclaimed the word of the Lord. But God allowed it. God allowed it in Hosea's life. God even told Hosea to marry a prostitute. But he did it for a purpose. And let me tell you something. If God is allowing trouble in your life, God is doing it for a purpose. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the Bible says, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. By virtue of the fact that you desire to live godly, the devil is going to persecute you. Why? Because he wants to pull you away from the Lord. Hmm. Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation because you follow me. He said, they hated me. They're going to hate you always. Don't think that because you're a Christian, everybody's going to love you. Amen. Everybody's not going to love you. That's why it's so key for parents to, teach, to love their children at home. You shouldn't send your children out looking for love. You should make sure they're loved at home because the love they may find in the world won't be love. It will be use and abuse. So you get love at home, amen, and you love them enough to lead them to the Lord so they experience God's love and you teach them what love, real love is really all about so that they are not deceived amen. by the enemy. In the world, you will have tribulation, amen, but he went on to say, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. So we can be joyful because we know because Jesus overcame, we will overcome as well. Amen. We got to see things from God's perspective. We have to pray for God's perspective. Even if when you look at Jesus, things look really bleak on Friday when they crucified him. They crucified him on Thursday night, really, because a day for them would start at 6 p.m. on Thursday. The next day, would, that's why when some people read the scriptures, they misinterpret three days. Because the next day would start at 6 p.m. Say today, 6 p.m. today would start Monday. All right? Like we, 12 midnight, and would start the next day for us. Well, 6 p.m. was start. So they crucified him on what we would call Thursday, amen, and on 
Friday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, he lay in the grave. I mean, it was bleak for his disciples. They were like, what are we going to do? All of our hopes, all of our dreams have been dashed because our Lord has been crucified. They forgot what the Lord said. Don't forget what the Lord said. Don't forget his word. In your drought, you're going to need the word of the Lord. But early on Sunday morning, Hallelujah. God raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just as he said he would. Saints, what we see from our perspective is not always what God sees, what God knows, and what God has planned. We are on this earthly level. God sits on his throne in heaven. He sees what we don't see. He knows what we don't know. And he has plans that he has not yet revealed to us yet. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hmm. I hear the Lord say, my thoughts toward you are good only and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. You might take that when you're 16 and read that and believe the word of the Lord, but you can take that when you're 70. And believe the word of the Lord. You can take that when you're 80 and believe the word of the Lord. Amen. My thoughts towards you, my plans for you are good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. That widow did not know what God had planned in the midst of her drought. But God had not forgotten about her. She didn't see what God had planned, but God had not forgotten about her. She didn't know God's plans for her, but God had not forgotten about her. Can somebody say, I may not see, I may not know, but God has plans for me. You ought to say it to this, I may not see, I may not know, but God has plans for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You don't have to see it. You don't have to see it. All you got to do is trust the Lord. You don't have to know it. All you got to do is trust the Lord. Amen. Things may be going wrong, but keep on saying God has plans. God is working this out. He's working it out for his glory, and he's working it out for my good. Hallelujah. I trust you, Lord. I look to you, Lord. I believe in you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, another thing that the Lord showed me in this passage of Scripture is that God had prepared this widow beforehand to receive her blessing. The Bible doesn't say it, but just read the text. He had prepared her beforehand. God said to Elijah, I have commanded a widow woman, a widow to take care of you. So God had already prepared her. She didn't know what God was doing. You, see, you, don't, you don't have to know. You, you, you get to a situation, but God has already prepared you. Yeah, you, you didn't see him preparing you. He didn't tell you he was preparing you. Amen, but he was preparing you. Whew, my, 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 my. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but, but you're in a situation. God was preparing you for it. Amen. That's why you can handle it the way you're handling it. Amen. That's why you haven't lost your mind. That's why you, you haven't gone and jumped off a bridge. Amen. Because God was preparing you when you didn't know he was preparing you. God was preparing this widow to, to, take, to receive her blessing. Amen. 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 He was preparing her. God is always at work. He is not a Johnny come lately. Amen. He doesn't wait till your troubles get to you and say, oh, I need to devise a plan. I need to work this out for her. She's been faithful. Amen. She loves me. He loves me. I, I, oh, no, 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 no. No, God is not waiting. Uh, he's a beforehand God. Can somebody say he's a beforehand God? That's why they call him Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He's a God, amen, who sees your need before you get to it. Amen. And he's already made provision for your need. Amen. So God is preparing this lady. God said, Says Elijah, I have commanded a widow to take care of you. Oh my goodness. Mm. So he was he had he was preparing this widow to receive Elijah and to take care of Elijah. He was because in the natural, if Elijah had shown up and this lady 
only had a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And she'd already concluded that the best thing for me to do is to make my last cake of bread and me and my son eat it, go to bed, and die. When Elijah said, give me a drink of water, she was, I don't have any water to give you. I just have enough for my son. But she didn't say that. She went and got the water. When he said, bring me a morsel of bread, she was like, I don't have enough. Because we read these scriptures and, oh, these are spiritual people. You know, they don't think like we think. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. People think, people think that way. But what's the difference? God had prepared her. God had prepared her to receive Elijah. She may not have known God was preparing her. Right now, stuff you're going through, you don't know God is working behind the scenes, preparing you for what's going to come your way. Not just what you're going to, what's going to come your way, but preparing you to receive the blessing. Preparing you to maybe receive the one who's going to bring the blessing. You know, that's why we keep saying all of the time, be attentive. Pay attention to the Lord. You may not know why God says you need to be here today or you need to do that today. But if you hear the Lord in your spirit, say, do this, do it. He's preparing you for something. He's preparing you for something. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's preparing you. And I looked at this thing, and I said, this woman could receive Elijah because God prepared her. And God said he was preparing her. I've commanded this widow to take care of you. Oh, it's a blessing when God chooses you. And in the process of blessing somebody else, he's preparing you to receive the blessing. Ooh, don't be stingy now. Don't be stingy. You pass by somebody and God said, give them. Do it. You pass by somebody, you see somebody, God says, stop and share a word. Stop and share that word. That's an impression in your spirit. You may not hear the audible voice of God, but if you're led by the Spirit of God, amen, then you know when the Spirit of God is speaking to you and saying, do this, do that. You say, well, God, I don't have enough. I'll tell you about the, the young man in, in Dominican Republic, amen, and he was getting ready to get put out of his house. He has three children, a wife and three children, nowhere to go. He's been given his all. His mother has cancer. And all of the, he's gotten loans on top of loans to take care of his mother while seemingly he's neglected his family. And the Lord said to me, you need to help this young man. So I picked up the phone and I called some of my friends. And I said, can we, can we do this? And they gave more than I expected them to give. There was a number set in my mind, and I didn't say it, because you have to wait for the Lord to do some things. And somebody, just, people just gave. It wasn't a whole lot. Don't take. Listen, when God blesses you, it don't take a whole lot of people to come together. So today, he's moving in his house. Today, he's moving in his house. Pastor that said to me last night, he said, you know, he said it's a pitiful situation. Well, they can't understand Spanish, so English, so hopefully. He said, it's a pitiful situation. He said, and I saw this need, and, and so I took some money. I took, I took some money out of my savings to help meet that need. Now, all of them are struggling. Can somebody say all of us are struggling? But when the Lord says give, what should you do? Give. Hallelujah, because God is preparing you. <laughs> I said to him, it's more blessed to give than to receive because the little bit I gave, I've already gotten it back 10 times. Amen? Are you understanding? It is more blessed to give than to receive. So when God presents a situation or when there's trouble or when there's, 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 there's distress, God has already been preparing you. Don't shut up the bowels of your compassion when there is a need because you don't know what's coming down the road. I tell you what, if you've been a blessing to other people and you're struggling right now, 
there's a blessing coming your way. God will command men to give in your bosom, to give to you in your bosom. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, the Bible says. Are you understanding me? God will command other people to pour into you good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Glory to God. Amen. I was pouring some, pouring some garlic powder into a small container last night. Amen. When it got near the top, I just shook it. Amen. Because I needed to put some more in the jar. I shook it and got some more room. God said, I'm going to shake what they shake you as they give because there's more. They need to give more. There's more room there. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Has anybody ever experienced running over blessing? You didn't ask for it. You didn't know where it was coming from. But there was a need in your life, and God calls people to give. God has already commanded somebody to bless you. Are you understanding me? God has already commanded somebody to pour into you. God has already commanded somebody to speak a word in your situation. God has already commanded. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, lastly, lastly. Obey the word of the Lord. As illogical as it may seem. As against your plans... As it may seem, obey the word of the Lord. And his word will shift your situation. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about this lady now. She's already concluded. I'm going to make my last cake of bread. Me and my son are going to eat it. We're going to lay down and die. But God sends his prophet with a word that shifted that situation. Now, go get me a, a little bit of water. She was okay with that. Maybe she had more water than she had flour. But then the word came. Now, bring me a piece of bread first. She said, as the Lord your God lives, I'm not lying to you. That's what she's saying. I'm not lying. I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and for my son. We may eat it, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said, Do not fear. I know we got our mask on. I know we shouldn't be talking. But let's just say, say, don't fear. Oh, goodness. I don't know. Some, I was reading something else this morning, another scripture. And the first thing that came out was, do not fear. And then the Lord began to just begin to minister to me about how fear will stop us. Now, see, y'all want to heat on. Now it's hot in here. Whew. Do not fear. Do not fear the word of the Lord. Do not fear. I have to rest right there. Because how much, how many times has fear stopped us? You don't give because you're thinking about you won't have enough to pay that bill. And it's not the bill is not even due. Well, I can't give this because I got to save this for that. Then your car breaks down. You got to spend it anyway. Maybe what you should have done was when God said give it, you should have gave it. And that giving would have opened the door so that when the car broke down, I didn't say the car wasn't going to break down. <laughs> so that when the car broke down, there was already a way provided to fix the car. Do not fear. Ooh, somebody said do not fear. Go and do as I as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. How am I going to do that? I only I just told you. I only have a handful of flour. 
Up, oh, you got to obey the word of the Lord. Amen. That God sent a word that will shift your situation. Right here, the situation is shifting. God is saying, go and make, you're going to have enough. That's what God said. You're going to have enough to make my, make the man of God's first. Oh, we live in a day of time, you know, people don't really respect the man of God. But, you know, this is not about the man of God, but this is, this is about the woman. But it's about the woman respecting the word of the man of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes people won't give to the man of God because they say he already got enough. You don't know what the man of God has. If God says give, you give. I may have more than enough. Your pastor may have more than, than you think is enough. But if God say give, give. Amen. Because that's going to open the door. Amen. For shifting in your situation. We don't want to look at people in the flesh and look at situations in the flesh. We want the spirit of God to move in our situations and shift us to take us to another level. To take us into another place. Amen and to make us prosperous in all of our ways. Amen. Go and do. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. Oh, he didn't even say make both of ours. He said make mine first and bring it to me and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord. Somebody said, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the bearing of flour shall not dry, be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on earth. So she went. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord came to her. The word of the Lord said, amen, do this, amen. And she obeyed the word of the Lord. But that word shifted her situation, amen. That's why we cannot discount the word of the Lord. When we hear the word of the Lord, there's a shifting, amen, in the spirit realm, in our situations already, glory to God. It may not be manifested, glory to God. The man of God said, make mine first and bring it to me, hallelujah. There was already a shifting that had taken place. She could make his first and bring it to him and then she could go back and make hers for her son and then the next day she could do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Not just for her and her son because God had commanded her to take care of Elijah. The, 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 the drought lasted three and a half years and the word of the Lord said the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. God saw his situation, and God did something about it. It was an out-of-the-ordinary situation, but we serve an extraordinary God. Hallelujah. He does not do things away Man does things, glory to God. He does not operate according to man's intellect or man's reasoning. Amen, because he is the sovereign God. Hallelujah. He, he supersedes us. He supersedes the way we think and the way we act and the way we do things. That's why we want to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. We don't want to think like other people in the world think. We want the mind of Christ, glory to, to the name of Jesus. We want to think like God so that when God is moving in, our lives we can perceive that that is God and we can go according to the word of God Jesus said my sheep know my voice and another's voice they will not hear so when I perceive the word of the Lord I'm not going to hear what the devil says I'm going to hear the word of the Lord and I'm going to obey the word of the Lord hallelujah but I've got to know his voice and I know his voice by staying in his word I know his voice by staying in prayer I know his voice by fellowshipping with him. I know his voice. Glory to the name of Jesus. Because I sit under the preaching and I sit under the teaching. Hallelujah. So that when the Lord speaks, I know his voice. And I'll be his voice. And he'll send a word that will shift. That will shift the situation. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bible says, blessed are those, blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, the maker, he's the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. 
He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord gives sight. Do you hear what the Lord does? He gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigners and sustains the fatherless and the widows. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Don't be wicked now. The Lord reigns forever. The Lord reigns. This is the God we serve. He reigns forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what we should do when we realize that the Lord sees us in our drafts. Praise him. Because knowing that the Lord sees us, knowing that the Lord sees us as his children, we also know that the Lord is going to move in our situation for his glory and for our good. He will do it. He will do it. Now, I can't say for that person that don't believe. That's you, on, you, you chose not to believe. You chose to reject Jesus. You chose to follow your own mind. That's up to you. I just know what the Bible says for his children. Well, I do know that this scripture says the Lord will frustrate the ways of the wicked. We will bless his children. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. He sees you. He sees me in our drought. Sees us. That's all I need to know. God, I don't need to know how you're going to work it out, God. All I need to know is you see. James Cleveland wrote a song a long time ago that says, as long as there is God, there is hope. Hmm. As long as God is real and alive, and he's a true and a living God, can't nobody kill him. The devil tried and couldn't kill him. Couldn't depose him from his throne. Hallelujah. If you're going through a drought today, the word of encouragement to you is that God sees you. Remember what you see many times is not what God sees unless the Lord has revealed to you. And most, most, many times, listen, God doesn't show us tomorrow because he wants us to trust him and live by faith. His perspective is not always our, the way we see things. But God will prepare you because he's going to send the blessing. And he will prepare you to receive the blessing. And re in receiving the blessing, God will send a word that will shift your situation. I sense in my spirit today that somebody's situation has already been shifted. Hallelujah. I don't know who came discouraged this morning, but I sense in my situation that somebody's since in my spirit, somebody's situation has already been shifted. Bless the name of Jesus. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Thank you that you see us in our droughts. And you always, we can trust you to minister to us in our situations. God, we cast all of our care on you because you care for us. In Jesus' name that we pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. This morning, if there is someone who does not know Christ as your Savior and your Lord,
never made a public profession of him after having trusted in him for your salvation. I want to give you that opportunity right now to give your life to Jesus. To say, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. Lord Jesus, thank you for taking my place in death. I receive you now. It's my Savior. If that's you today and you're in the sanctuary, lift your hand now. I want to pray for you. If you're watching us online and you're not saved, I want you, and you want to be saved, I want you to repeat that prayer of confession with me. And then I want you to follow through. If you receive Christ as Savior and Lord and write to us, let us know of the decision that you've made. Somebody's watching right now. If you put it in the comments section, they will take your information and we will follow up with you. Or you can write to us on our website. and We will, we will receive your email. We will follow up with you so that we can pray with you further and lead you further into the Lord and help point you to a church. If you don't live in this area or if you don't want to connect with us, point you to a place, a church, a Bible-believing church where you can connect and grow in the Lord. Bible-believing is key. A Bible-believing church. Repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Because according to God's law, the soul that sins shall surely die. And I deserve death for my sins. But Jesus, you took my place. You died in my place. Thank you for sacrificing your life for me. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Save me from my sin. I receive you now as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you are saved. We're not saved by sight, we're saved by faith. If that was a decision of your will. You didn't do it just because I asked you. You didn't do it because somebody told you you needed to do it, but you know that you needed to be saved and you prayed that prayer of confession. The Lord has saved you right where you are. You didn't have to be in the sanctuary. You didn't have to be on your knees just right where you are. God has saved you. Please take the next step and write to us so that we can follow up with you and help you grow in the Lord. Now, if there's anyone who needs to uh, rededicate your life or who needs to connect with the body of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord has led you to connect with us here at Tabernacle of Praise, we want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. If you're in the sanctuary, you can come forward. If you're online, write to us. Amen. Let us know. We're going to connect back with you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Is there anybody else? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And I ain't hugging everybody today now, y'all. Don't, don't think I'm hugging y'all. Because I ain't hugging y'all. God bless you. Amen, Sister Fly. We thank God for you. And, of course, we've already had our conversation. Amen. Uh, she's coming to connect with us today. Would you like to say something to the church? You don't want to say anything? She'll say something later, I guarantee you. But we praise God for you and the Spirit of the Lord leading you to connect with us here at Tabernacle of Praise. Thank you for obeying the voice of the Lord. And we praise God for the gifts that you bring with you, knowing that you're already saved, already spirit-filled, already working in the kingdom of the Lord. So we welcome you uh, to our fellowship.
Amen. And we welcome you to work and help expand the kingdom of Almighty God. God bless you. Amen. We officially receive you now. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going to go right on into Holy Communion. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. The day will come when we will be more normal and we can be more elaborate in the way that we receive people into the fellowship. But the important thing is that we receive our sister. Okay, we're going to go right into communion. If you don't have your communion that's on the table outside, please get it. Thank you all for being with us this morning. I pray that you've been blessed by the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us in our dry places and our drought. Hallelujah. There's nothing hidden from the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hallelujah. Amen. On that night before Jesus was crucified, yeah, before he was crucified, he and his disciples were in the upper room. The Bible says that after they had eaten, he took bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to them and said, take, eat all of it. For as often as you, this is my body which is given for you. As often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten the bread, which symbolized his body that was given for, for them on the cross. And for us, his body that was given on the cross. Then he took the cup which was filled with the fruit of the vine. Uh, for them, it may have been wine. For us, uh, because we don't drink alcoholic beverages, it's grape juice. Amen. It's symbolic of his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And the new covenant that has been established in that blood. He says, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death and my suffering until I come again. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that we have, Lord, to join together in holy communion. Thank you for giving your, your life, for giving your body, for taking those nails in your hands and nails in your feet, the piercing in your side with that sword and the crown of thorns on your head. Thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the new covenant that you established in your blood. And now we live under this blood covenant. Bless this holy communion, the wafer and the bread and the wine and the juice. Bless it, consecrate it, Lord, that it will be used in our bodies as we receive it to stir us in our faith to proclaim your death and your suffering until you come again. Bless those of us as we receive it today that we won't do this out of habit, or out of religiosity, but out of a pure and sincere heart committed to following you, to doing your will, and to advance in your kingdom in the earth realm. For those who are watching online and who are members who prepared in their homes to receive, bless us all now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when they had eaten, the Bible says they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We can't go there, but we can go to our homes, our different destinations, remembering to proclaim the Lord's death and the Lord's suffering until he comes again. Remember the Lord has shifted us. All right, pay attention to ways that God wants to use you as you go from day to day. We may not ever return back to doing things exactly the way we used to do it, 
So we have to remember to follow the leading of the Lord because souls still need to be saved. Amen? People need to be encouraged. People still need to be blessed. Thank you for being here today. I pray now as we receive the benediction, Father, thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy that abides with us now and forevermore. Let the people of God say together, Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Remember, remember to go online, find the items that we need, and let's, let's start giving. Amen. Let's start preparing to bless the children in Dominican Republic. Smiles for kids for Christmas. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, everybody do that. All right. God bless you.